again i welcome you to this course on mechanics of materials last time we have solved we were trying to solve the shear stress formulation for a beam having i cross section we had a beam of i cross section we had a beam of i cross section and this beam was subject to a shear force of 80 kN and we were asked to plot the shear stress variation across this cross i cross section now in the last lecture what we did we calculated the shear stress at this very point at the point uh, at, 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 the, at, the, at the interface between this flange and the web and we obtained that as far as the shear stress here is concerned from the shear flow, flow formula the shear stress on this entire plane was coming out equal to was equal to uh, 1.13 megapascal this is what we did uh, in the in the, in the in the last lecture now what we will be doing today is uh, let's again uh, try to now find out how much is the uh, how much is the shear stress at point c after doing after solving the shear stress at point c using this formula the shear flow formula that is tau is equal tau is equal to vq divided by it after you using this formula uh, for finding the shear stress at point C, we'll be using this formula to find the shear stress at point C using the same procedure as we have already discussed. Now, as far as the procedure is concerned, we know in order to find the shear stress at any point, for example, we have been asked to find the shear stress at point, any point, draw a line at that very point, okay? And whatever area is above it, okay? Find the first moment of inertia, sorry, first moment of area, that is Q, as far as this Q is concerned, Q is the first moment of area. Which area? Area which lies above the point where we have to find the shear stress. We have to find the shear stress at point C. Okay. So whatever area is above point C, we have to find its first moment of uh, area. Okay. We have to find V. Q. As far as V is concerned, V is given to us. It is 80 kN. As far as I is concerned, I is the total moment of inertia okay about the neutral axis that we have already calculated in the previous lecture and as far as t is concerned t is the thickness of our section as far as the thickness of this section is concerned thickness of our element is concerned that is equal 0 0.015 meter okay that is equal to 0 0.015 meter okay so the value of t is known to us the value of i is known to us now we need to find out the value of this q now how do we find out the value of this q as far as the value of q is concerned uh, as far as Q is concerned, we know Q is equal to A prime A prime Y prime bar. Okay, Y bar prime. Is equal. Now, as far as A is concerned, A is the area above the point where you have to find your first moment of where you have to find the shear stress. So A prime includes this total area. This total area is our A prime, which has been highlighted here in bold color so this is our a prime as far as y prime is concerned y prime is the y coordinate of the centroid of this a prime from the neutral axis okay so the thing is we, we we are familiar with we already know where is what is the a prime okay as far as a prime is concerned a prime is the area so this area the area is the combination of two rectangular areas this rectangle plus the small rectangle and as far as this area is concerned this is 0.3 multiplied by 0 0.02 and this area is 0.1 multiplied by 0 0.05 so this area plus this area gives us the total area now we have to locate the uh, y coordinate of the centroid of the total area now we already know as far as this uh, this area is concerned uh, this area happens to be the composite area. This area is composed of two rectangles. So we will use a prime y prime bar for this rectangle. Then we'll use this a prime y prime bar for the small rectangle. We will add them up. That will give us a total moment, first moment of area about the neutral axis. That will give us a total moment of area for this composite area. How we do it? The thing is, we do it. Uh, I mean to say, first of all, take calculate this area the area of the top flange area of the top flange is 0 0.3 meter that is 0 0.3 meter uh, multiplied by its height that is 0 0.02 that is 
zero point zero two meter. So this unit is meter. This unit of this is meter. Multiplied by the y coordinate of this rectangle from the neutral axis. As far as this, the what is the centroid of this um, of the of the of the flange? The centroid of this flange will be at the geometrical center. It is here. So its distance will be point one plus point zero two divided by two. So point so because this is at the center. This total distance is 0 0.02. Its half is 0 0.02 divided by 2. That is 0 0.01. So the total distance from the neutral axis will be 0 0.1 plus uh, 0.01. That's equal to 0 0.11. Okay. So we'll write this as this is 0 0.11. This unit is meter. This unit is meter. This unit is meter. The total unit will be meter cube. We have found this Q for which area for the top area, but this is also the portion of our area. Okay, so we'll add this up plus this area that is 0 0.015 meter multiplied by its height, it is 0 0.1 meter multiplied by 0 0.1 meter multiplied by the y coordinate of the centroid as far as the centroid of centroid is concerned its centroid will be at the center okay and its distance will be 0 0.1 divided by 2 0 0.1 divided by 2 that will be equal to 0 0.05 okay so again its units will be meter cube so if we add them using composite area method if we add them up it comes out equal to 0 0.735 meter into 10 raised power minus 3 10 raised power minus 3 meter cube okay so this will be our this is our cube okay now at point c therefore the value of tau will be the value of v is given to us the value of q is we have found it it is 0 0.735 into this much i we already know and the thickness is thickness of this is 0 0.015 okay so if you apply if you substituted these values in the formula as we substitute these values in the formula the value of v the value of q the value of i and the value of c the value of tau c comes out equal to 25.2 megapascal okay so the value will be that means the shear stress at the center sorry the shear stress at this at the point c is equal to 25.2 megapascal okay so it's equal 25.2 megapascal is the value of the shear stress at the center now so this is how we have to find now it's like if we are given uh, if we are asked to find uh, the shear stress at any point for example let me ask you for example what is the shear stress at this very point okay for example let me locate a point here at the center the, i have a point here and the point name is this is point d what is the shear stress here now you have to find shear stress here draw a line okay calculate the first moment of this area using the same formula as we have done calculate the value of uh, q for this total area for this and uh, so you have to calculate Q. You already know the value of I. The thickness is 0 0.015. The value of V is also given to us. Substitute in the formula, you will get the value of tau. Okay. So the procedure for you will be, what you will be doing, you uh, in the same way, you will be doing it for, for example, if you're asked, what is the value of shear stress here at this very point? In order to find the value of shear stress here at this very point, what you will be doing, just draw a line passing through this very point. So this is a line passing through this very point. Now identify the area above this line. The area above this line is this area. Okay. Find the first moment of this area. The first moment of this area will be equal its area that is 0 0.3 multiplied by this thickness. Okay. Multiplied by the y coordinate of its centroid. Its centroid will be at the geometrical center. It is distance from the neutral axis. Okay. So you'll be multiplying its area with the y coordinate of its centroid as measured from the neutral axis. The thickness is the t value of t is 0 0.3. Substitute in the value of the formula for shear flow, you will get the value of tau. Okay. This is how you will be finding in the same way you will find the value of tau at different the value of tau at different points. Okay. Now see if you find the value of tau here, which is very, very close to this flange, okay. Uh, the value of tau comes out equal to the formula for tau or uh, it's like here here if you find the value of the shear stress at this very point the value of if you are if you have to find the value of shear stress here you will write tau is equal to vq 
divided by i into t okay v is given to us q we have already calculated q we know i we already know as far as the thickness is concerned the thickness is the distance from here to here that is 0 0.3 okay now if you are here if you move to the point b okay which is in which is at an interface between the web and the plant if you are at point b the the value of v will remain same the value of q will remain same the value of i will remain same but only the value of t will change okay the value of t will be now equal to the thickness of this web that's equal 0 0.015 okay okay as is here when you have point b when you are calculating the shear stress at point b okay at that time where the value of your t is 0 0.003 now when you are going to the point p b when you are having point b prime the value of t is 0 0.3 when you are at a point b the value of t is 0 0.015 look how much difference there is in the shear stress the rest of the parameters are same your v is same your q is same your i is same only there is a change in thickness of this uh, thickness of the uh, element okay so here at point b prime the shear stress is 1.13 megapascal but if you are very close to this point b prime and you are at an interface between the web and the flange the shear stress value is 22.6 megapascal okay so you have to be very very careful while you are selecting the element i mean to say the basic procedure will be wherever you have to find the shear stress for example at this point you have to find the shear stress you draw a line okay this is your a prime calculate its first moment substitute in the formula get the value of the shear if you look here how the shear stress varies at point c the value is 25.2 okay at point b the value is 22.6 at very close to point b the value is 1.13 and at the free end the shear stress will be zero why the shear stress at the free end will be zero because if you are asked to calculate the shear stress here okay you draw a line here now locate a prime a prime is the area above this line do we have an area above above this line there is no area above this line therefore its first moment of area will be equal to zero when first moment of area is equal to zero substitute in the value formula for shear flow the value of tau comes out equal to zero so the value of shear stress at this free end and at the lower free end will be it will be zero here it will be zero here but as you are going from the free end towards the center the value of the shear stress keeps on increasing okay and this is the parabolic graph you can verify yourself okay so this is how the shear stress i want you to solve few more questions uh, as far as the questions which you should be in a position to solve do solve this question okay and solve this question solve this i section problem yourself this i section problem i consider as an important for my students as far as the understanding of the concept is concerned so this problem at least students should do themselves okay and i section after doing this i section problem uh, you will be solving this problem as well okay this problem is also to be solved by the students this is very important so this will be your homework and from this section the students must be must solve this problem okay based on the concepts that have been taught and i think uh, rest like this problem should also be solved by the students okay so i ask my i request my students to solve these questions so once you uh, are in a position to solve these questions then it, it is an indication that you have understood the theory